When we started working on Valorant Victory, uh, we were already having a good partnership with Yobo War Games on other war games. Valorant Victory is exactly that. It's this, uh, you know, putting together the core elements of a war game, but in a familiar setting of uh, the World War II and the board game approach. January 2018, I just finished working on my fifth war game and I was looking to a squad leader type game. So I looked around for uh, a board game that I could convert and came across Barry Doyle's Valorant Victory. And I thought it would take me 18 months to work on the game. I got to January 2020, realized I'd need some help to finish the game and uh, I asked Bruce, who I had previously worked on a war game with, to see if he'd join me in working on Valorant Victory, and he uh, was glad to jump in and help. But with Bruce's help, it took us another 18 months to finish uh, Valorant Victory and launch it. Immediately after that, we started to look to work on our first DLC. Designing scenarios with orders of battles and playtesting them takes a lot of time and we still had some development work to do. So I looked around for someone that could help with this and I came across um, Jim Oriscani, who was doing a lot of uh, Valorant Victory historical scenarios for his uh, YouTube and podcasts. And he, uh, he said, yes, he would. And uh, he suggested we do Stalingrad. So while well, Bruce and I were doing some additional uh, feature work on Valorant Victory, uh, Jim created and play tested 12 uh, scenarios for us. He created the maps, the order of battles based on historical events. Almost immediately after finishing the Stalingrad DLC, we wanted to start work on our second DLC. I was really keen to uh, conversion of um, maybe an ASL type module. And I reached out to uh, Xavier from Le Frontier and asked him if I could do uh, Shield of Chrome. Bruce and I worked on that. And we're out to launch uh, Shield of Chrome in July 2022 with uh, more new features for Valor and Victory. We didn't rest after that. We wanted to do one more DLC before the end of the year. I'd been talking to Barry Doyle in the background whilst we were working on Stalingrad and Shield of Chom, and he was working on an Arnhem module. He'd already designed some scenarios and a map for Arnhem, uh, just focused on the battles around Arnhem Bridge. So uh, working with Barry, and also doing a couple of my own scenarios. Uh, we converted uh, his, uh, his scenarios and the Arnhem Bridge map, and now have uh, our third DLC. This tells the story of the battle um, for that bridge. Uh, the first five are very much kind of um, the Allied forces breaking in and the Germans trying to hold them off. And what my particular favourite mission, the very final one, which is aptly named The Bridge Too Far, is 25 turns, uh, which is three or four times longer than any other game that we've had in Valorant Victory. And it is very much the Allies trying to hold out north of the bridge as the Germans are sort of trying to punch through across the bridge and uh, come from the sides as well. Um, so there's reinforcements of, uh, of the Axis kind of coming over time. The DLC has six scenarios in it. It's a smaller one than previous. The climax of the uh, DLC is really the 25 turn scenario, a bridge too far, where your British paratroopers led by uh, Lieutenant Colonel John Frost are gradually more and more outnumbered by the approaching uh, Germans, uh, camp groups as they uh, reach the battle. And it's really a case of, can you survive the 25 turns? It's really hard. I haven't done it yet.
Valorant Victory is an opportunity for anyone who is interested in war games but is a bit scared about the size of war games and the complexity and helps anyone who's interested in war games to uh, you know start from somewhere that's easy understandable approachable but deep and um, also familiar like you've got in the world war ii setting <laughs>